specifically a lot of token generation. Honestly, reminds me of playing uh, when you and I play Hearthstone a lot. Mm -hmm. Playing Paladin. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, it's basically a Paladin deck, right? Um, where Hey guys, welcome back to another Diving Into Altered. Jan? Colin? Very excited. You know, we, we've done a number of reviews now. By the time you guys are seeing this Ortis, uh, Ortis deck. Um, who are we taking a look at today? So, Sigismar and Wingspan, the Ortis hero. And this guy, in terms of the... Maybe starter decks too, but in terms of the roadshow, this guy was the most powerful one yeah. that everybody was kind of, you know, just playing in terms of you want to win, play Ordis. Why did you think that was the case? Why do you think Ordis uh, and specifically Sigismar was? Yeah, I think just consistent value, a lot of tokens, and when you have your opponent going kind of really wide in number of characters and kind of things going up on the board every time it can just be hard to deal with so yeah in that sense like from a starter deck perspective i think it's it's a good starting point great starting point and you know on the topic of consistency i think in any tcg consistency is always very important and and, and i like your point about how ortis decks this deck in particular goes wide because in the game of altered right you're choosing companion side hero side and as an artist player you don't have to make that choice because you're kind of going wide across the board kind of getting board presence in general you're making your opponent then to choose okay which side do they you know kind of pick and choose their fight so really excited to talk about this deck yeah yeah all right, let's take a look at the hero. So at noon, create a recruit 111 soldier token in your hero expedition. So it's coming up every turn. So your opponent is going to have something to deal with every turn, right? It's like, you know what's coming. If you can't, as the opponent, if you can't play onto both sides of the board, you can take an expedition. You, that's all you need, right? So it's a good baseline to have. And... I think it's not an overly powered hero, but it's it's a good hero. I, you know, I I'll push back a little bit. I actually think this is a very powerful hero ability, and the reason why I say that is comparison to the other starter decks. So when we're talking about Axiom, where we're talking about Bravos, um, where Bravos is every other turn. Yeah. Where Axiom is, you have to do something. Granted, you're getting a two-two-two. Ortis, you don't have to think. You always, no matter the turn, you get a 1-1-1. One, one, and later on, we'll talk about some other cards that kind of round it up on the expedition side. But I think every turn guaranteed, it puts you as an Ortis player saying, look, I can go all in on the hero side in the early game because I'm just automatically creating an advantage. Or I can spread it out and make my opponent choose. So I, I think it's actually a very powerful card. And I think this is part of the reason why it saw so much success at the Rose Show. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's hard yeah. to argue that. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's see what support this hero has. Uh, starting off with a high mana card, five yeah. mana, Jean d'Arc. This is actually a, uh, a real person, right? Yeah, I think it's like based off, off of Joan of Arc. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is, is a, Jean yeah, this Arc. Is a classic, uh, classic yeah. French um, heroine True. type of character, True. right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, Alright, so what does he do? Uh, she, sorry, this is a girl. She'll be followed long after she's gone. True. Uh, when I leave the expedition zone, create two Ortis 111 soldier tokens in each of your expeditions. So you're paying five mana up front for 222 worth of stats. Not great, but you're, you're just setting yourself up yeah. for probably the next turn. Obviously, if this goes asleep or something, it will not leave the expedition zone that turn. But the great part is, is even if this gets removed by removal spell, that's still considered leaving right. the expedition. Right. So those those tokens are going to summon. So, um, yeah, this is uh, this is a great card. Yeah, when it leaves the expedition, it'll it'll summon. You got four tokens, two in each. Like yeah. you're starting your next turn with 
you know, four, four worth of stats. At plus, least. At least. At plus least. your hero. So you're, after you play this card, your next turn you've got f five tokens on the board. Minimum. Yeah. At five, five, five. Yeah. Right? Because we're going to explore some other cards later that really we're going to refer back to this card and why it's like a, a wombo combo almost. Yeah. Okay. All right. Back to the low mana. <laughs> Another rare foundry mechanic. It's a one mana for a one one two. Yeah. Coming out of Axiom. Coming out of Axiom. Um, you know, the main thing with this obviously is slightly overstated, but you have the discard from reserve. Next permanent you play this turn costs one less. Yeah, so we'll see the permanence, I guess, at the end of the deck. Uh, yeah. so we'll kind of talk about that a little more, but that effect can really help you get those permanents out. Yeah. So Yeah, it's also somewhat of a setup card yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And in terms of stats, like you're not even sacrificing playing like a zero one one for one mana, you know. For it, sure, for sure. Yeah, which, it's a it's a setup card. Yeah. That's slightly above one one one. Yeah. And that's because it's the rare, but nevertheless, you're, sure. you're, you're getting good value. You're right? getting great value, yeah. All right. Again from uh your Ramos, favorite. Ramos, your Ramos, favorite Oscar, yeah. Yeah. So instead of boost, he's you know, obviously going to summon some recruits here, which, just like in Bravos, you're getting your value for the mana you're paying. Uh, this is the rare, whereas in Bravos, the rare, you're getting more value. Here, you're not, because it's an out-of-faction rare, so you don't get to take advantage mm -hmm. of the full, the full value of that rare. But nevertheless, you get to summon more tokens, which, again, we'll see why that's so valuable. But yeah. at baseline, you know, you're getting that value. Common recurring theme is Ordis recruits, Ordis yep. recruits. Yep. And this is another card that delivers that. So. Yep. All right. Ordis Trooper, just a vanilla 1-1, one, one, nothing to say there. Yep. The rare gets a little bit boosted. I mean, good in this deck, but outside this deck, I don't think you're really justifying a rare slot for for this. Although yep. it's, it's a good one drop, obviously. Yeah. Ordis Cadets. Um, understated for a two drop but you're almost getting your full value once you summon that token which you're getting it both out of hand and out of reserve so you can kind of consider it full value because putting two characters on the board uh, for this deck especially is going to be more powerful than having one character on the board so I think it's 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 a good card it's a good card and it you know play from reserve play from hand you get to create that recruit a lot of synergies with the, the landmarks and kind of other cards that we're going to be taking a look at towards yep. the end of the deck. Yep. Yeah. Vanilla, Monolith, Vanilla. Rune Scribe. It's just yeah. two mana, two, two, two. Uh, the rare, actually quite a bit better. You're only sacrificing one point in, in Forest. And if you control a token, which let's face it, you will control a token because your hero is going to be summoning it at, at base. Resupply. Yeah. So not a straight draw, but resupply still, you know, helping you gain card advantage, helping you kind of replenish your, your resources. Uh, and as you saw the other card, we're just looking at the cadets. He also gains the effect coming out of hand and coming out of reserve. So you don't mind him coming out of reserve. So I think this is a, it is a rare, but it's a, it's a good card. Yeah, it's a good card. Frog Prince. I love the Frog Prince because on the roadshow, this guy just completely helped me dominate. Bit of obviously, you know, if you've watched our other videos, anyone who's any card that's lacking in a particular, you know, area in this case, it's it's rock. Um, not the best, highly situational. Based off of my personal experience. The Frog Prince has come in clutch. Absolutely clutch with the 303 in the forest and the water. I personally like this guy, but, you know. Very similar to a card we saw in Bravos as well that was a 033, the yes. Pathfinder, right? Yeah. So similar, similar style, right? You know, in the right situation, like you said, it's going to be a great card. Comes with a bit of downside, but, you know, that's how it balances out, so... And I feel like the art is just something to mention because it's just a frog prince. It's got a little mallet. Yeah, know. great looking card. I it's, think. it's like, I just love this card. Um, so I'm biased. I'm probably going to toss up 
100% on this guy, even though objectively he's not that great of a card. But love me some Frog Prince. Yeah, he looks, he looks awesome. He's just a boss, man. Look at him. Yeah. He's a bureaucrat. Yeah. Go, good for Noble. you. Good for you. Moving on. Or just Gatekeeper. Create a token. Surprise, surprise. Uh, From anywhere, hand or reserve. Yeah, so again, you're slightly understated for the three mana, even more so than the, the cadet by an extra point. But, you know, both out of hand, both out of reserve, you're summoning that token. So that's what you want to be doing in this deck. That's what you're getting. So not overly powerful, but yeah. it is what it is. It is what it is. It's just a gatekeeper. Yeah. yeah. Or to spy, okay. Again, a lot of similarity, similarity to Bravos. Um, this is actually a card as well as an out-of-faction rare in Bravos, but you know, you're paying two mana for the 2-2-2 two, 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 and you're paying one mana for the Sabotage. Sabotage Which, is, is, is a powerful mechanic, right? It's a powerful mechanic, right? It, it reduces your opponent's ability to kind of bring cards out of reserve. Um, what we've seen in the Ordis deck so far is that it's very kind of two-dimensional it's just a lot of cards that throw a lot of recruits on the board which is fantastic because that's that's the win condition for Ordis. just flood your opponent with you know tokens Ordis spy kind of comes in and says look look let's play the game a little bit more you know intelligently in a sense that let's not just swarm our opponent with one one ones let's sabotage and that's where the spy comes in with a little bit of guerrilla warfare you know Use brains, not brawn. Kind of m mixes the both and provides a nice option for Ordis players. Did you say token? And so, like, this card to me is almost the best of both worlds. Yep. yep. Right. And you're, you're gaining back your, your one mana extra that you're paying for sabotage. Um, yeah. yeah. I think, I don't know if you can fit it in a regular deck. As a, as a rare, I think the common might be good enough in terms of yeah. adding some tools to your deck in, in the yeah. Sabotage. But for this deck, yeah, fits in well. Yeah. Yeah. Kakoba, Legion, Legion Commander. Yeah. So he's a commander, so he expects that the troops are ready for battle. So if you do have three or more other characters, a token does count as a character, obviously he will gain two boosts, so he'll be a 4-4-4 four, four, four for three mana, and I think you're, in this deck specifically, you're, you're going to be meeting that condition. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, pretty pretty consistently, obviously requires a bit of setup, and it's not going to be every turn, but you can probably kind of keep him in your hand, wait around until you've met the condition and get that overvalue of stats. Yeah, and I feel the condition is not overly difficult to meet because... You know, at the end of the day, you're playing an Ordis deck that creates tokens. Like, 80% of the cards that we looked at create a token. Yeah. Right? And assuming that that's almost always going to be the case where you have 3-3-3 three, three, three in tokens, or 3 tokens, rather, you're getting an overstatted card for 3 mana. Yep. Both from reserve, from the hand. I think this is a great card. And worst case, if you really need a body and... He's not set up. You still get two, two, two for three mana. You're giving up a bit of value, but like, it's not terrible. It's okay. You're out, you know. It's yeah. It's not terrible, right? Like it's. <laughs> if you, you need to, you can. You're definitely in a rough position if you're playing a three, two, 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 right? Or maybe you just need that little bit of oomph to kind of push you over to win that side of the board. Um, so yeah, I agree. It you know it, it it's not completely useless if you don't have the tokens, but. If you don't have the tokens, you almost don't want to be... Like, you're kind of in a tough position anyway. For sure. Like I said, you, you're okay holding him, but yeah. if you have to, yeah. it's not the, the worst thing you could play. So yeah. If you pull him, like, later in the game, fantastic. Yeah, Definitely you, not a tempo play. Yeah, you don't, want him, you don't want him turn one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the rare, even better, right? Yeah. You're gaining three boosts, so five, five, five for, for three. That's, yeah. that's going to be a pretty powerful drop. Yeah, almost double your value. Yeah. Right? And you got to play it twice. Yeah. All right. Uh, the common version, uh, not as good. Not as good. Still kind of creates the Ordis tokens for you, right? The Ordis recruits. 
you're kind of flat in terms of your stats, right? Yeah, four mana, four, mm -hmm. four, four, four. Yeah. Definitely comboing this with certain cards will make it stronger. But yeah. I think, like, you know, if you were to run this cards, would you opt to run just full rares? Um, I would be inclined to, but the rare slot is always highly contested. So it really depends. Um, you know, five mana is always going to be harder to play as well. Four yeah. mana, you know, you could play this turn two and, and be set up for a nice, uh, or day two, be set up for a nice day three. But yeah. it depends. I, I could see both seeing play. Right. Uh, just depending if you can fit the rare in your deck and if that fits your game plan. Obviously, if you want to have a lot of tokens, then I think you are going to be inclined to play the rare. Yep. It's probably, the rare is probably the card that, one of the cards that's going to generate the most tokens for you. Like exactly. four tokens, that's crazy. That's, that, you know, satisfies a lot of conditions for you. Yeah. For some of your other cards too, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, carrier, going on to landmark. So, you know, this is the classic... Ortis carrier. Yeah, like you gotta have this in your deck, in my opinion, because it rounds out your noon effects. Um, play this on tempo. Play this as early as you can. Um, rounds out your board. Puts consistent. You know, you're essentially getting Buddha value. Yep. Right. And it's it comes in at three mana, so kind of takes three turns or three days to recoup your value. And I think it's not a high target for your opponent to remove because, you know, you're only getting one 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 worth of stats every turn. So for your opponent to pay, for example, four mana to remove this, I think this is sticking on the board for most of the game. Yeah, and it, it's definitely a card that gets better with time because uh, there's a lot of cards that amplify Ordis recruits. So as this is pumping it out, right? Like anything after the third day, pure value. Yeah. Well, pure let's value. look at the one right after this, the monolith, the Ordis yeah. Bastion, right? Like every character, including tokens, that joins your expedition, it's going to gain a boost. So imagine you have your carrier up, you have your monolith up, you're, and your hero, you're creating two tokens per day, and at they're two, both two, two. gaining one boost, plus yeah. you're generating other tokens. Now this is a five mana landmark. It is going to be really hard to get out and not lose too much tempo. But if you can set yourself up and you know be able to put this, that is going to be a high uh, target for your opponent to remove if they can. Uh, and what can help you get this out is the first card or the second card we looked at that reduces the next permanent you play by one. Right? Yeah. If you can play this for four mana, or the carrier for two mana, that all of a sudden looks a lot better and it's a lot easier to put off, uh, put out and a lot less impactful in terms of losing losing tempo and losing the expedition that day. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, I, I think compared to the previous permanent that we were looking at, the landmark, um, this monolith, if your opponent sees it on the board, like that's when they kind of start getting a little bit scared yeah. of what you can do because this means that basically the next day after this card is played if this is not dealt with you're dealing with a lot of beef and this is not just tokens this is any character yep. so tokens for sure are going to be benefiting from this automatically all characters but all characters are going to get that one 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 and the way i see it is you know compared to say the carrier right where you kind of have to wait for three turns for it to recoup its value if the monolith is played at five mana the next day if you have five tokens five orders recruits you've paid off the value you're realizing your value you're realizing your investment right away again if the opponent deals with this we've got a situation yeah yeah so if this stays on the board like your opponent's in serious trouble and this is where playing those lower mana cost characters is going to be really beneficial right because if you can you know say you've played this you're going to have now five or six mana six seven mana at your disposal mm -hmm. you can put a two mana character mm -hmm. a one mana character a three mana character plus tokens that's already you know three four five yeah. characters there that are going to gain that boost so 
like you said, once this is on the board, that next turn, you're you're gonna be be pretty close to recouping your full value. Yeah, yeah, just because it's it's implied at the mana cost. Yeah. Charge. Oh man. Two mana. It's got fleeting, but more importantly, characters you control gain one boost. So you're you're setting yourself up in the mid to late game to play this on a board that just has tons of tokens on it and characters, but really tokens, right? Mm -hmm. Every token you have, this is this is doubling those tokens. So um, you have four tokens. They all of a sudden become all two, 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 just for two mana. Like that's that's crazy value, right? Like it's almost yeah. like playing the monolith for one turn in a sense. Yeah, that's one way to look at it, and you know, to to kind of make things a little bit scarier, right? Like, say you've got carrier out, say you've got monolith out, so you're already getting two, 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 two. Uh, sorry, yeah, two, 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 two. Ordis recruits out. You're playing this. On a worst case scenario, you're getting two recruits at three, three, three. Yeah, yeah, it can. As you're starting to get into this later portion of the game, you have your carrier set up, you have your monolith set up, and you can continue boosting your tokens. Like, yeah. you can be losing kind of a few expeditions early on in the game by getting these permanents up, but then your opponent's going to have a hard time keeping up with you and you're just catching up expedition, expedition. So, so let me ask you this, Jan. So, you know, you're day one, day two, you're drawing your cards. You pull charge. What do you do? Do you do you keep it for the eventual value play? Do you use it as mana? It's such a strong card. Yeah, I think you're gonna have three in your deck. If you draw into one of them, you know, turn one, you're gonna need to hold it for, you know, at least probably three days at at, at, at least, minimum, honestly. At least, yeah. So I'd probably get rid of it early so that you can set yourself up with playing your permanence like we talked about and just kind of yeah. keeping pace and not falling too far behind. Right. Because, you know, you're going to fall behind if you're playing those permanents anyway. So you want to keep yeah. stuff early that you can actually play and not just hold as a dead card until the right moment. For sure. And, and, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't need this to win. Yeah. You don't need this to win. You don't need it to win. It's kind of like the cherry on the top and... Yeah. You know, even if you have like, you know, earlier example, like two recruit tokens, it's unlikely that you you want to play pay two mana for two, one 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 boost. Like you're kind of coming in flat, right? That's not the point of this card, right? The point of this card is kind of to put you over and beyond what's necessary to really just overwhelm your opponent for two mana. It the the longer the game goes, the stronger this card gets. Yeah. For sure, hundred percent. No. Sticky note seals. Uh, one of I think the only removal spell in this deck, similar to um, Bravos. Yeah. Also only had one removal spell. Yeah. This is going to be uh, targeting permanence as well. Cost four or more, or uh, characters four or more. So it's a bit limiting in that aspect right because you have to target something that costs a lot so not as flexible um but it is a good card it is a good card right like to probably have... good in a mirror match too right some you know say if you're in a mirror match with another orders player it, it's all about setup and who has kind of like the best setup at that point and if your opponent pulls monolith before you do yeah. You're, you're losing on equal, like on an even playing field at that point. Whereas you come in with sticky note seals, you're dropping a three mana, get, getting rid of their five mana. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a card you're going to want to have in your deck because you do need to have, you know, removal options. But I really just don't like that it's it's four or more. Like three is kind of a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends on the meta, but like, I think majority yeah. of decks are going to have a lot of three cost characters yeah. and that's going to that's going to miss out uh, on that but yeah. it, it, it's it's a good card. Yep. Open the gates. 
rare. Yeah. So um, this is where you you are getting that. You know, you drop monolith at 